I have a confession. I am a Vim dropout. I've been using GUI text editors like Dreamweaver and uh, Coda and VS Code for years, um, but I've always been jealous of the people that get to use Vim and they look like they're flying around the code uh, and they keep their hands on the keyboards. And yeah, it's really nice. Um, but I just can't get through the setup of Vim. Uh, there's too many, too much configuration. Um, there's just too much pain there. And I just, I, I've tried a couple times and it hasn't stuck. Uh, about a month ago, I think somebody told me about Helix uh, and how it's a little bit different. Um, it's very Vim-like. It's still a terminal editor. It's still a lot of key bindings and stuff like that. Um, but it reduces, there's not as much setup, uh, like not even close to as much setup. Um, and it's easy to kind of discover and kind of ease in. So I am, this is my third week into using Helix, um, just a hundred percent. So I haven't opened up VS code, uh, in about three weeks and yeah. So these are kind of my experiences with, with Helix. I wanted to give a kind of rundown. So many of the Helix videos are people talking about coming from Vim to Helix. Uh, which is cool, but if you're already in Vim, you're already kind of in that world. You've already suffered a little bit of the mode pain and all that stuff. You've already learned that stuff. Um, but coming from VS Code to Helix is a little bit different. So uh, yeah, so I wanted to pop over and kind of show you what I got going on. Uh, some, of, some of the things I just want to talk about, like I want to show you some of the things I really liked about Helix, uh, some of the things I don't. Uh, and yeah, so maybe you can make a decision if you want to dive in or not. Um, so yeah, I have an old code, code igniter PHP app. Uh, it's really easy to fire it up. Just HX gets you in. Uh, I got I'm showing my little keys down here because I think that's important <laughs> with these things. Uh, and you come in and it's like, wow, it, it, really clean. You're like, okay, what's, what's going on here? Um, so the first thing is spacebar. So what's nice about Helix is a lot of things that you do, it's very discoverable. So you hit space and like you see a little menu over there, right? If you hit colon, you can start typing and you can get, you know, like autocomplete. It's like autocomplete's really in there. So space and then question mark will get you into this where you can pretty much search like where, whatever you want to do. So like, oh, I want to replace something, right? And so it'll show you how to do that, um, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, so you, if you ever get lost or stuck, you can always come back there. Um, I think that's pretty cool too. Uh, themes as well is pretty cool. Right now I'm using Tokyo Night, uh, but you do colon and just type theme space. And then you can actually tab through. Some of these are light modes. Sorry about that. Burning your eyeballs. Um, but yeah, so these are, you know, you can kind of go through here and pick whichever one that you like. Um, and then you can even try one out for a bit too, right? So here, let me, I'll open up a file first. So opening up files, this is another cool thing. In Vim, you have to install something called like telescope or some kind of fuzzy file finder. Um, in Helix, it's already built in. So you hit space and then F for find file. And let's say I want to do, like I have a notification model in here. This is an old code igniter app, right? So I can start typing models, right? There's my model and then I can do space and then you can do notifications. And you can see it like it's already, it's finding these things and letting me kind of like just kind of arrow through them, which is really fun. And yes, I'm using, by the way, full disclosure, I am, I'm not, I'm using arrow keys still like a, like a heathen. Uh, I have not gone to the HJ, KL keys. So I'm not that hardcore yet. Um, but yeah, so I go to this. And so this is how you can see um, what those themes are going to be, right? So I can do theme and, you know, you can kind of see what you want. Um, and then of course you can always like select the theme and press enter and it will stick with you. If you find a theme you like, um, another cool thing is that uh, the Helix, it gives you a shortcut to get into your config. So you can just type colon config open, bam, and there you go. And you can see I have a, I'm gonna show you these things that I did, but this is my whole config. Um, this would be pages of config in NeoVim, <laughs> um, but this is it. And some of the, a lot of the stuff you don't even need at all. Uh, but yeah, just theme Tokyo night. Yeah, there it is. So 
yeah. So anyway, so let's get into this real quick. So finding files is really easy, right? So you can, you know, just fuzzy find whatever you want there. Let's say uh, like a controller admin, right? There you go. It, I find this really, really, really fast and easy to find. Um, and then if you do space slash, you get the global search. So down here in the lower left, you can say, um, like, let's say I wanted to find a function. I know it's called get all, right? Um, and like, so I can do that, right? And so I can find all the instances of get all. It looks like I'm <laughs> diving into some other stuff here. Uh, let's try something else. Get by ID. Wow, I'm still searching in this stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's what you can do. So uh, global search notification model. Yeah, there you go. So now like, uh, these are all the things that I'm calling. So render notifications, you, you can, you, you get the point. And what's cool about this is you can do a global search here. So like, okay, I know these are all the places I'm calling notifications model. Um, and let's say like, I know it's in like a view, bam, and, you know, you kind of quickly filter that out. Uh, and you can go to exactly what you want. Um, another cool thing, let's close this real quick. Inside a file, uh, so this has the PHP LSP and tree sitter and all that kind of fun stuff too. So you can do space and then S for the symbols. And so these are like all the things that you've defined, like variables or, um, you know, just things you've defined in there. So I can just like start typing, um, you know, get by user, right? Like, the, uh, like I know I wanted to get by ID or something like that, right? So you can kind of see how easily you can kind of get through these things as well. Um, so that's been really helpful. I know in VS Code, uh, I'll open up like a model or something that has a bunch of functions. And, um, you know, again, this, this, this file gets pretty big there. I have models that are even bigger than that. Uh, and I know I just want to jump to a function like, hey, my render function. What was that? Like space S render. Oh, there it is. Um, so it's really easy to get around. Um, and that's really, really cool. Um, hey, what else? So I have up here in the upper, on the top here, I have, so I'll open up my config. This is my buffer line. So mo working with multiple files. So the buffer line I have set to always by default, um, it, it doesn't show it. And um, yeah, so you can see up here, I have notifications model. And if I like open up, you know, admin model, right? I have that there. And let's say, you know, I open up a view and yeah, there's my footer view, whatever. So I have all this stuff in here, right? Um, so you can see here, I have these buffers open and they're kind of like tabs. And I think if you have, I have my mouse turned off. So I think you might be able to click through them like that. But there's a better way in Helix, again, back to space. Uh, and then you'll see B for buffer list. And so this has all your open, um, all your open files, and it shows you like where you were in the file. So I find this really helpful when I'm working on like multiple things, and uh, you know you're kind of jumping in between files, and you're like, oh, okay, wait, wait, what was I working on? You know, you can do space B and be like, oh right, I was here. That's where I was coming from. Um, there's also shortcuts to is it like Control O to go back in time. Uh, to like jump back and control I to go forward. Um, so that's kind of cool too. I don't use that as much, but like, I know if I'm like, if I'm working on something, if I'm here and let's say I'm doing something um, and I know I want to go back to just reference something and then go back and forth, you know, that's something that you do quite often where, um, you know, maybe you're, you're calling the function somewhere and then you defined it somewhere else and you kind of want to just jump back and forth. And so control O and I are good for that. Uh, there's also space and then I think it's J. Yeah. So this is a jump list. So these are all the places that you've like played around in. <laughs> so it kind of keeps like a history of all the places that you've been. So this is kind of helpful. Like you want to jump back somewhere and you like totally forget where you were. Uh, and it wasn't the last thing that you did. Maybe it was like three things ago that you did. Um, so this jump list is here. Um, so that's really cool. Um, I like that. So switching between that's that's pretty easy. As far as emotions are concerned, yes, this has the same thing. I, I this isn't like a big how-to, but um, 
just getting around again you can use the what's it the j h you know you can do all that uh to to get around and i know vim users it's the same key bindings as vim uh, if you are coming from there again i'm still using the arrow keys which bites me sometimes when i'm in the insert mode but uh, for the most part it's okay um and then escape to get back out obviously um yeah and so this is there's this is probably where like you don't need to be an expert at it first and you can start learning stuff as you go um like for instance m gets you into match mode like i don't know i haven't really used half of these things but i know like m i m like match inside the like current thing um you know will, will give me that or if i do um match inside and then parentheses see it'll like highlight that and the cool thing is in helix like I think it's different in Vim and Vim. It's like, you have to do the verb first, like delete, delete what delete line. Um, but a helix it's, you highlight the thing first and then you do something with it. So yeah. So like X highlights a line. Uh, and what's cool about this, I have relative line numbers on. So like, I know I'm on line 127 here. Um, and let's say I just want to highlight this whole function or maybe two functions, right? Let's say when I like cut this whole thing, right. I can do um, 12 X see, and it just highlights that whole thing. And then I can hit D which cuts it, deletes it. Um, and then let's say, Oh, don't want to do that. You know, I could just hit U to undo uh, P to paste all that kind of fun stuff. Again, I'm not going to go over every single thing here. This is more of a, what you can expect if you're trying to do this from VS code. So yeah, so copying and pasting, uh, multi cursor is cool too. So let's say, oh, let me go to, haha, let me go to my notifications and where's my render notification render. Oh, yep, there it is. So, oh no, I, that's not what I want. Uh, send notification email, haha, <laughs> see, there you go. So let's say, yeah, see, I have all these HTML things. I'm building out this HTML email, super ugly. Um, but let's say I want to change the name of like this variable, right? Um, right. So that variable there, this is kind of cool. This is multi cursor editing. So let's say 25 X, right? So I have that highlighted and I press S for search and then it'll, I'll start searching. So I'll do L S HTML, right? Bam. Look at that. So I've highlighted them all press enter. And now look, I'm, I'm controlling all of these cursors. And what's cool is I can do like, like B goes back and then E goes to the end of the line. So B E, um, and then I can hit C to change it and I can start typing whatever I want in there. Right. And it does it for all of them. So yeah. So let's say I want to call it that. Right. And then I hit escape. Now I'm still using all these cursors and then you hit comma to like collapse it down, but that's really fast. Um, I really like that. Oh, another thing I like about multi cursor mode. 25 X. Um, right. And so now let me search for bananas. Right. Uh, the cool thing is too, like, so let's say I need to add a semicolon to the end of all those things. If I hit end, look, it goes to the end of all the lines, even though they're technically different amount of characters out. That's cool too. So yeah, these kinds of things are, are just nice that I don't think you get in VS code or it's not obvious in VS code. Um, and yeah, so Super, super nice there. Oh, hey, I'm doing, I'm back in there. Cool. So that's it. Um, yeah, so these are, that's just kind of like the basics of, of, of getting around. Uh, trying to think what else I've really, really liked. So yeah, so here's some of the tweaks I've made that I think has made it better to come from VS Code. Um, like, like, so go to my config. Um, Obviously, I have buffer line set to uh, always, which gives me these tabs up here. Uh, auto format true. So like when I save it, it like auto formats it. Um, I have the mouse turned off, line numbers relative. Uh, these are all things that are override. Um, when I'm in insert mode, so you see how you have like the cursor like this. But you're if you're in insert mode, it's a bar. So a nice little visual reminder. Um, select underline, blah, blah, blah. So I've mapped these, right? So I like... I like having, I like having control W to close a file, right? Cause that's kind of what we're used to. Um, and then control S to save. So yeah, those things I've pretty much that they're just kind of muscle memory for me. And, 
Uh, I think Control W does something with Windows and Helix, but I don't use it, so it's fine. Um, another interesting one that I I like that I just kind of made up is, um, you know, let's say like we've we've made all these changes and checked them in the Git, or if you're switching in between branches in Git and stuff like that, uh, Control A that just it just does a reload. It just reloads all the files that you have open, uh, which is nice. So another thing that I find interesting with um, Helix, and I think Vim does this too. So there's Y to yank, right? Which is like copy. Um, the problem is that there's a clipboard yank and there's like just the Helix only yank, right? So like if I, if I was in, obviously, so what I have is I have this map to both. So like when I highlight something and I hit Y, not only is it in the Helix clipboard, right? And I could do P there, right? Um, but I can also flip over to like something else, right? And then I can hit paste and it's there too um, because it's it's on the system clipboard and that. So if you don't have that, um, Y is to yank, right? And then you do space Y to yank to the system clipboard. I find that weird. I just have it doing both. Um, control V, this is another thing that I, I like too. So this paste from the clipboard into something else, right? So like this happens all the time. Let's say you're like, you find some code, you're on, you know, somewhere like, you're like, ah, right, I, this is my code, right? You copy it to your clipboard and then you come over here and you're like, oh, right, I want to put it here. You can just do control V and it will, you know, put that in there. So that's another thing that's, you, you'd have to do it the other way. So I, yeah, I, I've mapped that. That makes my life a little bit easier as well. Um, and then the same thing for insert mode, because that's another one of those things that that's weird. Like if I'm in insert mode, right, um, and I want to like save something, let's say I've done something, like you normally have to exit out and then save it. But I forget to exit out of insert mode sometimes, and I just want to save it. So like I can do that, and I can hit S, Control S. And what this does is it writes the, it saves my file and then switches me back into normal mode which is again, kind of cool. Same thing with like closing windows and stuff like that is that it'll close the window and it'll put me back into normal mode. Um, and obviously when I'm in select mode, I want Y to do both those things too. So sorry, that was a little long winded, but these are, I'll have the link to this uh, in the notes of this too, uh, in case you want to, this has just helped me come from VS code over to, um, over to Helix. So yeah, it's been it's been really really good. There's a lot of stuff. Um, something I miss still is I miss. Oh, hold on. Uh, see now, I'm buffer close explanation point. Yeah, I don't want to save it. Okay. Um, one of the things I definitely miss is code folding. So that's not here in Helix. So if you're over in VS Code and say, hey, I just want to collapse this function, right? And then you know, do that. The code code folding thing. Uh, I know there's plugins for it for uh, NeoVim as well. Um, that doesn't exist here. So there's no code folding. It's for the most part fine because it's so easy to jump around. You know, I would normally just use code folding to like fold something out of my way. Um, but it is sometimes annoying. Like, let's say if you're in, uh, that's not a good example, right? But um, if I'm in like a file that has like a lot of HTML, right? And I just want to like fold up some HTML to get it out of my way. Uh, I can't do that. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Um, there's also no file tree. And so my workaround for that here in Linux is there's something called Yazi. And so what I will do is just open up a new tab. And again, you can do this in Tmux or Zellige or Zellige, whatever it's called. Um, but I type Yazi and then this brings up my it's like a tree thing. And obviously you can like, you know, if you want to add a new, like, let's say I need to add a new controller. I just go in here and I type a, and I say new controller PHP and bam, there it is. Um, and then I can go right back to here and do new controller. Yeah, so there it is. So, yeah. Uh, a little bit of a pain, you know, again, if you're used to, I think the tree not being there has definitely been one of the things that I miss 
the most uh, and code folding. So those are the two things that Helix does not have. They're, they're both like hotly debated in the Helix world. Um, so if you go to uh, Helix's GitHub, you'll see code folding and file tree are two things that are open issues uh, that a lot of people want, but there's complications there. And um, I don't know, they're trying to keep things simple. They don't want to introduce a whole bunch of plugins and stuff like that, which I appreciate because again, this thing is fast. <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing to, to know coming from, um, you know, coming from, you know, something like VS Code is just how fast it is. Uh, and so, yeah, that's that is pretty nice. So that's it. Um, I didn't want to get too in the weeds with this, but I uh, just wanted to show you, um, you know, what life has been like um, with Helix. So, all right.